What is going on guys, it's Suck and I am back with a brand new video on Super Duper Tech. And in today's video, I'll be showing you guys what it was like taking still images and videos on the 2016 Google Pixel. This is a friendly reminder that if you guys do want to see a comparison video between this model Google Pixel and the newer 2017 model, to hit that subscribe button to be notified when I upload that video. But without any further ado, Let's hit the titles. So first off, I do want to get into talking about the specs when it comes to the rear camera. Now it is a 12.3 megapixel camera with an aperture of 2.0 and the size of the pixels on the sensor are 1.55 microns. In terms of autofocus, we do have face detection autofocus along with laser detection autofocus and the camera is also capable of shooting 4K video at 30 frames per second but unlike other flagship devices this smartphone does not have optical image stabilization instead Google have opted to use electrical image stabilization which uses the gyroscope and a number of other sensors to detect the shakiness in a shot and smooth it out so taking a closer look at some panoramic photos that were taken with the Pixel, you really do get a good feel as to how well the Pixel can expose for both brighter and lower parts of a specific scene. And as you guys can see in these images, the clouds are nicely exposed for, and when you look at these other images where you can directly see the sun, it doesn't overexpose for those parts of the scene. But for every 10 panoramic photos taken with the Pixel, there were some parts of the scene that would appear slightly brighter. Brighter. For example, in this image, the grass on the left looks a lot brighter than it does on the right. Also, with the Pixel, you weren't restricted to taking 180 degree panoramic images. For example, here, you are looking at a 360 degree panoramic image. And in addition to this, you can also take 360 degree spherical panoramic images, which along with allowing you to capture horizontally 360 degrees, it does also allow you to capture both up and down. Taking a look at these close-up images of flowers, you will notice that there is a nice subtle blur between the flower and the background. Now this is mainly down to the fact that it has an f2.0 aperture and comparing this to the f1.7 aperture on the HTC U11 you can definitely tell the difference as the images on the right have a far softer background. But in general when it comes to taking an image with the Google Pixel you'll have a hard time trying to take one that doesn't look half decent. Colours are slightly saturated but they're not as saturated as you would get with other flagship devices. And as I said earlier, when it comes to exposing for different scenes, the Pixel is one of the best to do it as it's very good at exposing for both the foreground, background and if you are taking photography outside, it is also very good at exposing for the clouds in the sky. But beware if you are taking images in direct sunlight that the lens does tend to flare quite often so it may be a good idea to apply a bit of shade over the camera lens. Now one area which I have a love-hate relationship with the Pixel is when it comes to zooming in on far distant objects. So let me get into talking about why I love the zoom on the Pixel. But first up, when you are zooming in on distant areas, once again, like I've said before, it does have a good track record at exposing the scene very nicely. Now this normally means that you do get a half decent shot, but when you are comparing it to other flagship smartphones, the amount of zoom that you get isn't really up there. I mean, if you look at this, which was taken on the Pixel at maximum zoom, and you compare it to the likes of other smartphones, such as the iPhone 7 Plus and even the S8, and yeah, sure, the iPhone 7 Plus and even the OnePlus 5 has a telephoto lens, but when you look at the image from the S8, you can see that Samsung are offering more zoom and they don't even have a telephoto lens like you do with the iPhone and the OnePlus. And over on the front of the device, we do have an 8 megapixel selfie camera, which can be used to take some rather nice looking selfies. As you guys can see from these images, it does expose once again nicely for the sky, and you can see the skin tones do look fairly natural. This is a front facing video camera quality test on the Google Pixel. Now you guys should get a good feel as to what the video quality is like being reproduced, along with of course the audio quality.
doesn't actually look too bad if you are looking to get a nice selfie camera on this does look quite nice and it does seem to be exposing for the sky in the background fairly well this is a video camera test on the rear camera on the Google Pixel now you guys should get a good feel as to what the stabilization is like along with of course the audio quality being reproduced as you guys can see I am walking at a steady speed and you guys should also get a good feel as to what the stabilization is like of course this was shot at 4k So in general, footage taken with the Google Pixel does turn out very nice indeed. I have found that it's one of the best phones when it comes to exposing for different lighting conditions. And when it comes to video stabilization, for a smartphone that doesn't even have optical image stabilization, I find that it's one of the best when it comes to stabilizing shots. And after using the HTC U11, which has a vast array of microphones located all around the smartphone, which allow for 3D audio. After using the Pixel, I do wish that this feature on the U11 was available over here. But one thing which I already mentioned once already in this video, which if you've been watching closely, you should have picked up, is that the camera does have a tendency to flare a lot, especially when there is a lot of direct sunlight. But other than this and what I talked about earlier with regards to the zoom, the Pixel has a solid camera and you will not be disappointed if you choose to purchase it. So then guys, that has been it for today's video. I do hope you did enjoy it. If you did enjoy it, then be sure to hit that like button. And if you are new around here, then why not subscribe? Also, if you have got any questions as to what you've seen in today's video, then be sure to leave them down below in the comment section, or alternatively, you can go ahead and hit me up on my social media. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one.